Back with Bobby and JJ Radio, we have uh, Mr. Russell Yeager with BRD, which is Big Red Dog, uh, one of the premier engineering firms here in San Antonio. So let's jump back into it, Russell. Um, how did you guys get your name, BRD? Uh, well, when we started the firm uh, seven years ago, we really wanted to be entrepreneurial and have that communication vibe that I talked about before and make sure that we're really talking to our clients at a high level. Uh, one of the guys that we brought on really early to the company, we felt like really embodied those characteristics and uh, we didn't really want to name it after the, the original founders. That just would have made it like every other engineering well, firm that's, ever. That's definitely part of it, but also it would have limited our ability to kind of grow and expand and become who we wanted to be. Sure. And so we named it after him, and his name is Cliff. So we ended up naming it after his nickname, which was the Big Red Dog. I would have never guessed. <laughs> yeah, Actually, Bobby. I did guess. Yeah, Bobby's really proud of that. <laughs> so. For people that don't know, because there's so many different types of engineers, you guys are civil engineers, right? Right. So just in a nutshell, like what do civil engineers do? So I usually start off explaining that to people with everything that the Romans did to make their uh, the Roman Empire great, good roads, running water and sewer. That's our bread and butter. That's gladiators? What we make sure. you have gladiators? Like slavery? Uh, we gladiators? do have gladiators sometimes. <laughs> They're four or five. Yeah. I'm like, you guys are in charge of slavery? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so everything that, that made the Roman Empire great. Well, all of the infrastructure that sure. they put together that allowed them to be uh, dominant at the age they did, that's what we did. We just do it with more modern materials, more modern software. We're able to do things that are maybe a different level than they were, uh, but a similar type of infrastructure. And again, if, like I said before, if we do it right, then we set the table for the future of that piece of property and that development. And I know you keep on saying that you, you guys uh, have a, a different outlook as far as you know client communication and you have that you really support the entrepreneurial portion of it. How is it otherwise? How, how, how do you guys, I mean, I know we kind of already asked you, like, you guys, what separates you all, but, because you've been in engineering for a bit, right? Sure. So, so you've seen probably the other side of it. I have. How, how, how are the other guys doing it? Um, I mean, I Typically. think the biggest thing that I think we try and do is we, we want to reward our team members and our staff for helping us grow our company. I mean, sure. You don't go from three guys to 105 guys without having other people share in that vision. Right. right? And I think a lot of times you have engineering companies that are a little bit more conservative about the business side of what they do than, than maybe we've been. Give me an example. Um, well, I just I think as engineers, typically we want to look at every single number, jot and tittle, and make sure it's all perfect. What we knew is that there was a place in the market for the service that we wanted to provide, and we wanted to grow as fast as we were. people were willing to hire us. And that just meant we needed to allow people at maybe younger ages or with a different thought process to be able to be successful in that model sure. and give them more opportunities. And that's where that entrepreneurism comes from. Gotcha. Um, let's go back to some of the projects that you're doing. So, And I know when we're talking in the green room a little bit, you you guys are focusing the four major markets in, in Texas Correct. thus far. I'm sure that you're going to expand past that. Um, how do you feel that you, you made a statement in the green room that you said you're just trying to help San Antonio grow up a little bit? Let's talk about that a little bit because we talk about it all the he time. He said San Antonio was immature. Or, no, he yeah. didn't say that. No. He inferred it. Oh. Which, so I'm trying to clear it, clear the room. No, I'm just kidding. But like, tell me how, because I feel that that we, we are the little brother as far as the the other markets. You know, us doing real estate. Uh, I always feel like uh, it's a little bit behind uh, the other major cities in Texas for sure. Yeah. Do you feel that way, uh, Russell? And how are you guys helping? Yeah. So when we first started our company here, what we got told is everything you see in Austin, five years from now, you'll see it in San Antonio. Sure. You know, and that was sort of a joke. But, you know, we want to try and help San Antonio grow up, not just by doing things that are cutting edge, but by helping smart, planned developments that are going to bring more than just simply a, f a flashy skyscraper mm -hmm. that are actually sustainable, that bring a different level to San Antonio, which sure. is why we love working on some of these projects downtown or the project that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, with the Valor Club is they're thinking about a big picture of how this is going to be sustainable, how it's going to serve the community, and we're going to be able to do something that actually helps more than just simply the project itself, but the right. neighborhood within which that project's being developed. So let's talk about two of these projects that we know uh, really well just because we're also working with the developers. So Essex Modern City, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is you're turning in this eight-acre pallet factory for the most part right. into like a, for lack of better words, live, work, play. Correct. Right, so it's going to be... If I remember the numbers, because I should, it's going to be uh, 80,000 square feet of office, mm -hmm. about that, about 46,000 square feet of retail. Right. You have 200 luxury condos, mm -hmm. give or take, 160 sure. brownstone walk-ups. You still have a Mercado type of area. That's right. Uh, like a wall, that like a climbing wall that that, right. is, that everyone can use. Big TV screens everywhere. Yeah, you know stuff that's just interactive and and, right. and public focused, and and this is and you're gonna 
but you guys are, are allowing this to really flourish by making it functional. Right. So our goal is by the time we're done and the buildings start going up is we put all the infrastructure in place that all those things can happen. Sure. Uh, and we've also put the background information in with the city and the neighborhood and all those other things that you're going to have a bunch of people buy into this in de development instead of maybe try and combat its growth. Sure. Um, it's obviously a very aggressive development. It's something that is, again, like I said, it is pushing the cutting edge of what both San Antonio or what we've even seen across Texas. Sure. So, Especially for the side of town that they're doing it in. It's something totally different. Um, no one's, people really have not done any, um, nothing he's been out there. And to do something this big in this part of town, it's huge. Yeah, for sure. Probably the biggest thing since what, the, Al the um, Alamodo. Not the Alamodo, yeah, the Alamodo. Yeah. Sunset Station, that area. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, Sunset Station too. So. Yeah, but you guys are just making sure that it's functional. Yeah, we just want to make sure that it works well and people can get their get their way there and that it, it works well. But we also, you know, we play a part in the design team to just make sure that people think about things all the way through. Right, like how much parking is there going to be? Is there going to be That's sufficient right. parking? Can you get to the parking? That's Do right. we have sewer? Do we have sewer? Bob is obsessed with it for whatever reason. Yeah. And right, you're also right, doing uh, Lone Star, which is adjacent on the southeast, uh, west side of, of downtown as well. Right. And and that's even a bigger project, as far as geographically. Yeah, it's physically it's bigger. Obviously, they have some bones that they're already working with there um, that they're that they're trying to continue to work with and expand on. Um, wh what I'd say about that one is its connection to the river into that neighborhood. It's a long time coming, and everybody's really excited about it. They really want to see it happen. Right. Um, and we really enjoyed being able to work with the city and the developer to bring. Uh, all of the entitlements into play and make sure that it was prepared for the type of density and development that they were looking for. So when I went to the um, a, a function that y'all were a part of there at, at Lone Star, and so from what I understood, there's going to be multifamily. It's going to be a lot of national tenants. Almost feels like a, a quarry on the on, in the downtown area, like bowling alleys maybe, maybe some theaters and stuff like that, movie theaters. But even a lake was going to be right. Like in come, like it was going to be in that area as well. Does that that sound correct? Yeah. So, you know, if people who remember the Lone Star Brewery before I was in San Antonio, but sure. grew up in that neighborhood, it was one of the first public pools in the south side of San Antonio. And we wanted to pay homage to that. We wanted to provide a context to that and, and kind of keep that there. And what we're using that pool for and that lake for is actually to do water quality feature to make sure that the water that's coming out of that development and going into the river has been cleaned uh, through a kind of a biological process before it's going to get into the river and maybe cause some sort of damage. So sure. um, we, we wanted to be able to do both uh, in one place, and so we were able to do that. Perfect. So, Russ, thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to switch gears and take a quick break, and we're going to talk about another development that you guys are working on, the Valor Club. Uh, you don't want to change the dial. We'll be right back with Bobby and JJ Radio.